Hello guys, back again with the Al Rasta channel, and this time, as always, we will be back to talk about the best Donghua series, and of course, it is Swallowed Star. In the previous episode, at the Cosmic Mercenary Basic Assessment Test, Luo Feng and his team encountered a strong team, the Imperial Team, which at that time conducted data mining on the Northern Dragon City team and then slaughtered them. Because in the Northern Dragon City team, there were Hook and Gaia, whom Luo Feng already regarded as colleagues who had to be saved. In the end, there was a clash between Lu Feng's team and the Black Dragon Mountain Imperial team, making it a one-sided battle because the enemy team was far superior in terms of strength. While Luo Feng entered the lower area of Wind Thunder Canyon, where there was wind pressure capable of tearing apart the body of a strong warrior, the situation of Hong, God of Thunder, and others was at a disadvantage because they had to continue the fight that was still not over. And in a crisis situation, God of Thunder had an idea. He would use the power of thunder from the sky as the ultimate attack to subvert his opponents. Then, what will happen in this episode? Okay, without further delay, we will go straight to the storyline. To transfer the power of thunder found in the sky, the thunder god got help from Hong, who used his domain as a connecting medium that was sent to the thunder god's body as a storage medium. Feeling that the attack that Luo Feng's team was preparing this time was unusual, in the end, the imperial team chose to stay away from the thunder god's location, which at that time was the storage of the abundant thunder power. In order for this plan from the Thunder God's idea to be realized, Hong, who did not let the opponent go, then moved towards the opponent and again utilized his domain ability to confine the Imperial team. And when his opponent was trapped inside the reddish-black domain, that's when the God of Thunder unleashed the power of Thunder and headed towards the domain where the enemy's movement was now being restricted. Meanwhile, Luo Feng, who was trapped in the lower area of Wind Thunder Canyon, was still inside the ball formed from the Silver Guard's body, and with Babata's help, he was trying to find a way to escape from the terrifying wind pressure. According to Babata, the path of the wind track at the bottom of the canyon is actually very simple, but it is quite difficult for someone to get out of the place. The wind pathway at the bottom of the canyon is centered on a mountain that moves in a clockwise circle below the canyon. The winds were moving at a strong 15 degrees towards the north and east, and what Luo Feng had to do next was to take advantage of the wind moving towards the north until he could finally get out of the path of the very strong wind. Luo Feng was also required to go to the northern bottom area, because that place only had wind pressure that was not so strong. It became the only safe location in the bottom area of the entire Wind Thunder Canyon, and Luo Feng could survive after he managed to reach it. Currently, Luo Feng's own movements were slightly slowed down because he was under the protection of the Silver Guard. So in order to speed up his movement here, Babata asked Luo Feng to get out of the protection of the orb, and Babata also asked Luo Feng not to die in this place. Because that would be tantamount to him destroying Huyambo's entire legacy. Starting his preparations, after Luo Feng was already on the northward wind trajectory, Babata also gave Luo Feng the signal to release the protection of the Silver Guard, requiring him to move independently to face the strong wind pressure that blew away the rocks. And this is what made the wind pressure field very difficult to traverse. In his plan to get out of the wind pressure in this place, Luo Feng was knocked down several times, crashing into the walls of the canyon. But he was able to make good use of the rubbed cloud rattan. After successfully rebalancing his body, Luo Feng continued his journey. But unluckily, Luo Feng's arduous journey was interrupted when he had to hit a large rock, which threw him off balance and was almost swept away by the wind pressure. For a moment, Babata began to feel that Luo Feng had failed in his task, until Luo Feng finally came into view again. And this time, he used the Heaven Forbid Shuttle in drilling mode and used the rubbed Cloud Rattan stock tied to the weapon. This way, 
the flying rocks were no longer a problem for him. And Luo Feng finally managed to get out of the deadly wind pressure trajectory that rotated clockwise. In the lower area of Wind Thunder Canyon, moving some time towards the north, Luo Feng, who found the wind pressure to be slower, next stopped by a cave. Luo Feng felt that there was something strange about the cave as the gravitational pressure there became heavier. Of course, there was a large gravitational field there. Not even wind, thunder, rain, or snow had any impact on the area around this cave. In addition to there being a large gravitational field in this strange place, Luo Feng also found quite a number of windhorn stones lying around. Not wasting it without lingering, he immediately kept all of the windhorn stones he saw and put them into a storage ring. There were a total of 15 windhorn stones, which Luo Feng was able to get for free, which was truly quite a favorable situation for him. Of course, it was indeed good news, but for now, the most important thing for him was to return to the battle as soon as possible to provide assistance to Hong and the Thunder God, as they were still dealing with a strong team from the Empire. Back to the battle, the ultimate attack used by the Thunder God managed to knock out some of his opponents. While Geese, the team leader, seemed to be able to get up after receiving the Thunder God's attack, here Geese admitted that the idea possessed by the Thunder God and Hong was brilliant. But unfortunately, the lightning power he utilized was weakened because it had to undergo several transfers on different media. And then Geese and the two members who were still able to get up again began to counterattack, then repelled Luo Feng's team quite easily. They could be beaten back quite easily because the Thunder God himself had almost reached his limit as he had to endure the immense power of thunder earlier. And since the opponent was still at a higher level, inevitably, Ago and Tianan had to try to provide cover for Hong and the Thunder God, making the fight even more disadvantageous for Luo Feng's team's side if this continued. At that moment, from another direction, several flying knives appeared that shot towards Geis. And of course, these attacks came from Luo Feng, who had finally rejoined the fight. In addition to providing the fact that Luo Feng was still alive, Luo Feng also brought a piece of good news. Thanks to the help of the previous enemy, he came back while carrying 15 pieces of Windhorn Stones, material that was a bone of contention for the participants in this assessment test. While throwing a somewhat evil smile, Geis felt that nothing would change with the presence of Luo Feng, who was still at the early star level. Moreover, his team was also no longer able to continue the fight, so the victory of the Imperial team here was already determined in his opinion. Oh, of course not. From here on, the changes will be immediate, said Luo Feng, who had apparently already prepared a terrifying attack. He had placed his red copper shard in the sky to absorb the power of thunder. And after the sacred shard was filled with power, Luo Feng flew it towards the opponent. Luo Feng's terrifying attack this time caused Geese's body to be torn apart, as well as flung away towards the mountain wall in an extreme manner. But when the execution attack was aimed at his opponent, Q Yu, who was hiding somewhere, intervened again. He deflected the path of the red copper fragments so that the red copper fragments would not pierce Goose's head. Not letting the attack end in vain, Hong and the Thunder God here utilized the thunder power still left in the red copper shard weapon by forming a combined domain and blasting Geiss inside. An attack that dealt great damage to Geese was burned, and with his weak body still on fire, he fell to the bottom of Wind Thunder Canyon and was expected to die after being exposed to the strong wind pressure in the lower area. Meanwhile, Luo Feng, who managed to find the whereabouts of the hidden enemy, sent Tianan to chase after the bully, and Tianan would be escorted by Luo Feng's weapon. After seeing the intruder, Luo Feng did not expect that the person was Qiu Yu. In this situation, Qiu Yu, whose location has now been revealed, and the Imperial team has been defeated, 
then took the initiative to run away while carrying Guse, who was in an unconscious state. But unfortunately, Luo Fang and the others could not stop the man from running away from the location. After the battle ended, Luo Feng and the team then approached Gaia, who was in mourning because the team she brought with her included Hook, who died in the ambush carried out by the Imperial team. Luo Feng apologized that they came too late. In a low tone, Gaia said that the selection process for a warrior to become the elite of the universe was extremely cruel, and only those who had gone through the hurdle of death could break through to the universe stage. It was an absolute requirement if one wanted to grow stronger. Gaia was certain that this statement was also the understanding held by Hook, who was now having to stretch for his life. At that poignant moment, there was a sudden shock caused by a mountain that seemed to be collapsing. Babata said that the mountain collapsed due to the effects of Luo Feng's team fighting against the Imperial team earlier. But who would have thought that the mountain that collapsed was the place where Luo Feng had stopped by before? an anomalous place where there is a large gravitational field. To avoid falling large rocks, Luo Feng and the others immediately evacuated. When the mountain collapsed again, something strange happened because, right at the location Luo Feng had previously visited, the large gravitational field found there sucked up the surrounding rubble until, finally, it formed a sizable wormhole. After seeing it, Babata, knowing the strange occurrence, told us that the wormhole that appeared and sucked up the ruins was the border entrance to the world within the world. In the world of thunder created by sector lords, there is often a world within a world. To create a place like this, a very high cost is required. And there are usually many hidden treasures within these places, making them worth exploring. Now Babata no longer wonders why there is such a large gravitational field, as it is the entrance to a hidden world within a world. Similar to Babata's explanation, many teams from other organizations felt that once they entered the wormhole, they could find many treasures there. But before that, they would first report to the organization for reinforcements. Because if they didn't call for reinforcements, the most favored team in this case would be the Imperial team, which had thousands of members. Here, the noble ninth princess of the Imperial team did not expect if the World of Thunder which even though it already kept its Windhorn Stone quite valuable, still kept other treasures. And with the opening of the entrance to the world within the world, it should be the beginning of a new beautiful and fun adventure, according to her. Right after the border entrance gate opened, there were already at least thousands of people who entered it. And now Luo Feng asked Gaia what she would do next, continue the adventure or stay in mourn. After being silent for a while, Gaia then said that Hook had previously said that if one did not seize the opportunities that came their way, then they would never be able to protect themselves or their race, tribe, or loved ones. That was why they had to keep moving forward, no matter what. Wiping away her tears, Gaia made up her mind that she would join the world within the world. <laughs> Elsewhere, her highness did not expect that geese, who had lost her team members, would still dare to come to see the princess. And without feeling ashamed, Geese, who came together with Kyu Yu here, asked to be given a few more members so that he could return to avenge the shame against Luo Feng's team. Similarly, Kyu Yu here promised to bring some of his people and provide assistance to Geese to take revenge. But it seemed like Her Highness Princess did not approve of Geese's submission because she was only concerned about her personal matters. Moreover, their main priority for the next time was to enter the world within the world and search for treasures there. At the same time, a member also gave a report on whether the area around the border entrance was safe. And then, without lingering, the Ninth Princess and her members departed for the world within the world. So did Luo Feng and the others, where they had now entered the border gate. And after entering it, they were immediately confronted with a world that was completely different from before. The world in this place looked very peaceful, 
unlike the World of Thunder, which provided terror and was filled with dangerous terrain. Not long after, Gaia received a call from the Northern Dragon City organization asking all its members to gather. Before parting, Gaia promised to make a submission to the organization so that Luo Feng and the others would be allowed to join the organization. Right after Gaia left, Hong thought that even though there were a lot of treasures stored in this world, it would be very difficult to obtain them. The Thunder God went on to say that if it was the Northern Dragon City organization that summoned Gaia and the rest of his team, it was clear that the organization intended to gather their full strength to fight over the treasures there, and it was likely that other organizations had also done the same. As for Luo Feng's team, which isn't affiliated with any organization right now, according to the Thunder God, if they wanted to fight for the treasure, they should look for a place that wasn't targeted by the enemy. And of course, if they wanted to find a place that wasn't targeted by any organization, Babita could provide assistance regarding the location. Right after entering the world within this world, Babita immediately gathered information about the density of the warriors within 20 kilometers. And Babita had already obtained several places containing a total of 3,200 cosmic crystals, and they were all buried underground. Would Luo Feng and his team be able to loot cosmic crystals from this place? While the situation at that time itself was very difficult, the warriors who participated in the assessment had now given reports to the organizations, each of which they belonged to, regarding the world filled with treasure. And it is clear that henceforth, super powerful people from various organizations will intervene and make the battle there even more brutal than before. A battle filled with the blood of every warrior to fight for the priceless treasure. A prelude to a major incident that will soon galvanize the universe absolutely insane. Here we will also be shown some new faces who are strong people, and they are all under the auspices of a certain organization that has not yet mentioned who these people are. Okay, thanks to those of you who have watched until the last minute. Don't forget to support this channel by subscribing, liking, and commenting. And the last word from me, bye. Oh,